What's up, Sacramento? Today we're talking about Airbnbs and why they could be a good decision. Things you need to know to get started, the whole Airbnb process. Let's go in right now. Welcome to Sacramento's number one YouTube channel for all real estate news regarding Sacramento and the surrounding areas. So if that's you, hit that subscribe button and that bell will bring you bi-weekly content. We also go live every Wednesday at 5.30. So tune in, let's get going and let's talk a little Sacramento right now. What's up, guys? It's been a kind of a crazy 24 hours. Yesterday at 5 o'clock, as I was driving to a listing appointment on Highway 65, I was rear-ended. Someone rear-ended me going 65 miles an hour. They're undocumented without license. My car totaled. So for a lot of people who have been uh, seeing my Instagram and all this kind of stuff and finding out what happened, that's what happened. So I might be a little out of it today, but I'm good to go and I'm here for you guys. So I uh, so just want to let you know a little bit about what's going on in my life. Is it TMI? It might be, but I just want to share. All right. So today I'm bringing on Kathleen. What's up, Kathleen? Hi. Okay. So we're going to talk a little bit about Airbnbs. Kathleen's going to talk. She's the queen of Airbnbs about if you're a beginner, if you're in the Sacramento market. The other thing too is also all these lives that I do on Wednesday, make sure that if you have a question about Natomas, Land Park, housing, the market, new builds, feel free to ask them. We're good with, to take a little bit of a time out and answer your question to make sure that you're getting the most out of these lives. So Kathleen, talk to us a little bit about Airbnbs. Well, yes, of course. First, I must say to the master here, Mark, I'm glad you're okay. I know it was a hectic day yesterday, and um, but it looks like we made it through. So good. You know, I saw that guy too. Like I braked because it, it was like the stop and go traffic. I, I put on my brakes and I see the rear view mirror or, you know, my rear view mirror. And I'm like, okay, the guy's got to start looking now. He's better start looking now. And man, he was like 10 feet from my car going probably like 65 miles an hour. And then he locked on those brakes and he just boom. And then he wrapped around and then he smacked the side of my car. And it was like literally highway 60 for anyone driving on 65 yesterday, at five o'clock. I apologize if you made it home <laughs> late, but half my car was probably the reason why you did litter it all over the highway. So I do apologize that for that in advance, but I don't know. I walked away without a scratch. And to be totally honest, like what I took away from that whole experience is number one is even though the person w didn't have a license and didn't have insurance, I felt really bad for him. He was like a 19 year old kid and it, it stinks oh. to have to deal with something like that, no matter what. And number two is I was super grateful, even though my car was pretty totaled at the moment, <laughs> I'm super grateful that I walked away from it. And, um, you know, I'm grateful for that straight up. So, okay. I know, let's get to you're Airbnb. here with us. Awesome. Boom, boom, boom. All right. So what are the pros and cons of Airbnbs, Kathleen? Okay. Well, uh, let me back up a little bit. I am sure that I'm not the only one that has fantasized about having an Airbnb. I mean, doesn't it, doesn't it just like, you know, it, it sounds like such a great way to just make extra money. Well, I dug in, let me tell you, there are a lot of, I don't want to deter anyone yet because I did my homework and Sacramento is a tough city. So first we're going to go through the pros and cons though. Yes. Okay. So, so hit us. All right, Mark, have you stayed in one before? Yeah, actually, I really like Airbnbs. Although I will tell you one thing, the first Airbnb that I ever selected, I thought it was really, really beautiful and it was really, really nice. But the pure furniture was so horrible. Like it was so perfect for photos. You know what I mean? It was so, oh, it was so cool. It was so nice. But I swear I got some of these like blow up furniture that I had in my car for the beach and I brought them in to lay in that because the furniture was so bad. So, but at the end of the day, like Airbnbs are a good way, we're a good way to go. I know with COVID, you know, it's a little tougher now and restrictions and everything too. But I, I like the idea of going somewhere that's not a hotel, somewhere that's a little homier, somewhere that you can kind of feel like have that experience of like a cabin or like, you know, I like the Airbnb vibe. I think it's a good idea. I think it's a such a smart business concept. I mean, I think it was just brilliant. And I think a lot of people can definitely make money with that. Like, you know, with this whole SB9 thing and all this kind of stuff happening, I think it's definitely a way for people to, um, to pay off a little bit of their mortgage, make a little bit of money and, um, you know, all that stuff. I mean, think how many people are coming into Sacramento on a daily basis to check out the city and the area and whatnot. And I know I have clients that have Airbnbs and they make a lot of money on them. So yeah. So hit us, hit us. How do you get started in this Airbnb thing? Well, you know, um, it's interesting. I 
actually stayed in one in Sacramento last month. And if I thought it was awesome, this uh, woman was new to the market and I actually put pictures up on my Instagram today um, to try to, you know, um, tell people a little bit about the live tonight. And um, it was gorgeous. Like she was a designer though. So I must say like she had that going for her, but she put her best foot forward for being a first timer. Um, but anyway, you know, as far as I was going to piggyback on what you just said with our new clients, we have clients right now that are in Airbnbs waiting for their new homes. Don't we? Like, I think, um, there's a couple of our, our guys that are in them. So anyway, yeah. So the, uh, okay. So let's say, let's start, let me start you off on the right foot. Okay, so someone's looking to purchase, let's say, a house, right? That house has like a ADU on it, and they're thinking to themselves, you know what? That'd be awesome if we, you know, moved, bought this property, we moved into the house, and that ADU could be maybe an Airbnb that we could make extra money for them. Okay, so like from that concept of thinking about it, how do you do it? Like, what does the process look like? Do you have to sign up with Airbnb, city stuff? Like, where are we looking at as far as like what 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 does that look like? Yeah, well, actually, so, um, yeah, there's a whole process, but, but so I don't know if you want the good news or the bad news first, you know, all those people that want to buy, um, buy a, a new house and it's got a cute little guest house, guest cottage out back. I mean, that's actually what I just stayed in was someone's guest cottage and I don't know where the loophole is, but it is illegal as of January, 2020 in Sacramento, if it's not permitted prior to January of 2020, you cannot do a short-term lease on that, um, on that, uh, ADU guest house, cottage, whatever you want to call it. Okay. But what if it, what if the ADU is permitted, you're good to go? Like, how does that look like? Is there a place on the Airbnb website you can like create a like profile? Do they bring an Airbnb inspector out here to look at the house? Like, how do we get it from like, from like, you have a spot to like, this is how much I'm going to charge. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, I, and I, I put together a nice little, uh, sheet if anyone is interested <laughs> with, um, what to do before you start to do, you, you need to do some homework and obviously top priority is going to be to whether you're in Sacramento, um, city or in the County or in Elk Grove or anywhere, everybody's got their own, um, specific uh rules and regulations even some um hoas and um you know uh like associations they have their own rules too so that is that's number one you should do your research to see if it's even allowed um in your area but yes i uh i found the best website other than airbnb they have their own little tool on the website but there's a um a website called rentalizer like breathalyzer, but rentalizer, and you type in your address and it'll give you a, uh, um, it'll give you a, a, like a kind of a snapshot of what they think you can get for your, um, property. So, um, and yeah, I actually have a few different, um, websites that you can look up and, and just kind of gauge the market. So, um, yeah, that's kind of, that's, kind of, that's really what you have to do first is figure out if your property is marketable in the right kind of areas. Like, you know, you could have a condo in downtown and it might be completely the best place for say like upcoming events, you know, like our business conferences and things like that. Um, I know we don't have as much right now, but yeah. So do, do the research, check out your property. And then yes, then there's another, several steps that I really would advise to do before you just jump in. Okay. So let me ask you something. Okay. So like I'm sitting here, I'm thinking to myself, okay, I have a permitted um, home and a second home on my property and I'm looking at it saying, okay, or even like, you know, I'm thinking about coming up to Sacramento looking for an investment property and I'm saying, this is what I want for Airbnbs. So is there like a place on the website that I go to apply? Does it cost any money to apply? How long, like that kind of stuff. Like, tell me like, wh like what is like my first step? Like, let's say there's someone watching this broadcast and saying like, oh, it's cool. But like, how do I even like put my pinky in the water to start the process rolling? So, um, 
I think first things first, you need to apply with your city. Um, actually, I, I found it really fascinating that um, I had some uh, documentation that I found from, I know it's a little <clears throat> old, but there were 678 properties listed back in 2016. And there were only 23 hosts that were legally registered with Sacramento. So um, <laughs> that's like less than 5% and that's not good. So I, I think, I mean, I'm not going to tell anybody if you want to go ahead and, and, and start the process because heck, you can go right into Airbnb, sign up as a host. I, I did yesterday and I got a call already and I was like, wait a minute, I was just kind of testing out the website. And they already called me and they're like, hey, OK, let's let's talk about your property. But um, okay. yeah, so it's really easy. But yeah, I would go. So to you actually did an application yesterday and you started getting contacts yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I got well, I got contacts from super hosts, which are with or those people that have like, you know, they have like 500 rentals under their belts and they're super, um, you know, five star type um, hosts. And yeah, so I got a call from one of those guys right away and he's like, hey, can I help you get the rest of your, um, you know, get your house up and ready to go. <laughs> so. Okay. So the super hosts are people. Okay. So let me get this right. The super hosts are the ones where like, if you have a property and you're putting it on Airbnb, they can reach out to you almost like a property manager. No. So actually what a super host is, is if say I put my property up and i get continual five star reviews from my guests and um airbnb likes what i'm doing i'm paying my fees on time and all that kind of stuff i'm basically a five star student or a five star host okay. so that is um that's what a super host is and it's okay. really just a um you get a little star next to your name on the website so people um they rent from super hosts more often just because it's you know they have the reputation. Okay. And so when you were looking in Sacramento, what was the stuff that you were looking for? What, what helped you choose the place you were looking for? A pool. <laughs> okay. Um, I definitely was looking, I, I like character. I, I, I wanted character. Um, I didn't want just like a condo. There's tons of condos out there. I'll tell you. Um, it, and again, the other thing that is, this goes back to the new law as of 2020. Um, the fact that you can't just rent out your um, your guest cottage or your pool house anymore. That is a problem, at least for people like me, because I don't want to stay in someone's house. So I would say 50 percent of what I was seeing or, or more was a room in someone's house. And I wanted to just be there for business and go in and out my own door and all that kind of stuff. And so that's that you kind of have to, you know, weed that out. But yeah. OK, so when you were searching for Sacramento, you were seeing a lot of rooms for rent and a lot mm -hmm. of like kind of like unpermitted spots. Right. So do you think it's a viable option for people? I mean, OK, granted that, you know, you have to have the spot permitted or you do rooms. Do you think it's still a pretty viable option as far as making money, as far as like the system? Or is it come something that like, you know, because here's the thing. Whenever I have investor clients coming in, the two things they think, they think Airbnb, but then they find out that the restrictions are too much and it's kind of a pain in the butt to do. And they're also kind of confused because, or not concerned a little bit. They say, well, like, what if my Airbnb doesn't rent for a lot of the month and it only rents a little bit? As con and so, they, you know, there's always a back and forth between that I have with them. Like I say, OK, you can go Airbnb, you know, it's still a little bit of a gamble in setting that up. And there's still a big question mark as far as Airbnb is like how to do it, how to set it up and everything, too. Um, so hopefully uh, your PDF will help people with that, the whole setup process as well. But the other thing too is you, you go Airbnb versus a, you know, a rental, right? So with the rental, like you have someone that comes in, they're renting it month to month. They probably aren't, they're not going to pay you nearly as much as an Airbnb, right. but you don't have to worry about the cleaning that happens after anyone leaves the Airbnb. You don't have to worry about like off seasons, all that kind of fun stuff. So how do you, as far as you, okay, if you had, if you bought yourself a house, would you go the Airbnb route or would you go more the rental route? Um, I would still try the Airbnb <clears throat> route because number one, it's a short term commitment. Um, number two, I think um, I like to be in like 
I don't know how to explain it. Some of these Airbnb um, houses, they want complete privacy. Um, other people go just so they can be interacting with the host and interacting like, um, you know, with experiences and, and going on trips and whatever. And those kinds of hosts, I mean, I would like to be involved, like if they want, you know, breakfast or they want to come hang out at the pool or something, you know, like I would be happy to, if that were me at, at my house, I would be happy to do that kind of thing. But so it's a short term commitment, though. That's primary. Um, it is a little pricey to get started, though. So uh, the fees that I found from um, from the uh, city were, I mean, you're probably looking at at least six hundred dollars of investment um, just for the application fees and for you have to get a business license for this also. So if this scares you off already, then I think that it's probably not for you. But, you know, business license registration you have to file um what they call the bed tax or a transient um occupancy tax and that's 12 percent so um there's a lot of, of fees so if you get scared um you know that's that's something else but me i still would be i still would go for it because if I can charge 300 bucks a night because I'm in a great area and my house is awesome and I'm getting great reviews and I don't have to commit to months and months, then yeah, I still, I still would go for it. Okay. 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 Yeah. That's the crazy part. Cause I know a lot of like a lot of investors I work with were hit a little bit during COVID for the Airbnb thing, because all of a sudden it was just locked down and it wasn't, you know, you couldn't really do it. So, you know, I think the pros and cons are definitely there. I mean, like as far as going Airbnb, I think it's a little bit more of a hassle and a headache to be honest. And I'll take yes. the, I'll take the rental area of it. Like for me, if I had a property, I definitely think I would not go the Airbnb route, even if it's more money. I think the idea of having like people come in and out of the house constantly, the idea of maintenance on a house, the, the idea that, you know, you just have a, like, a, it's kind of like a whirlwind of people coming in and out of the property. I think the wear and tear in the home is going to be a little bit more. I think you can make a lot of money on Airbnb probably in the long run, but also if you're going to buy a place in the seasonal area, like, let's say like Tahoe, you know, you're going to have like definitely like, you know, air times probably where there's no one renting your place out. So I do think that that is um, my situation. The other thing too, as far as rentals, if I was looking for something like this, I would probably steer away from Airbnbs just because I like the idea of getting one tenant that's going to pay them rent every single It it's something like his, a lot of investors have a bottom line. And so they need to make sure that whoever's coming in is going to at least pay the bottom line. So it's a little bit of a gamble as far as that kind of stuff goes. I think, and the other thing too, I will say this, um, is I do think having an Airbnb, unless it was a, unless you hired a property management, like far away from you could probably cause problems, right? Like think if you're living in Sacramento and you had an Airbnb in Hawaii, like, you know, if something broke down, something happened, you're kind of far away as opposed to renting to like a couple or, you know, a couple of people that you knew or whatnot, that it was kind of like you already kind of knew their backstory, credit, all that kind of stuff. And you're moving in there. So at least for me, that's kind of how it looked. But again, like I said, Kathleen, you're the one who kind of did dug in as far as like liability, as far as insurance and all this kind of stuff. So well, I don't know. that was one, that was a question I actually got. Um, I put, I put my, I put questions out, um, you know, to see if anyone had questions about this out on my um, social. And um, Sabo, Sabo, um, he asked if you can run an Airbnb remotely. So you just mentioned, like, can I run from Hawaii? Well, you can, but actually only 90 days out of the year in Sacramento. So otherwise you have to file a conditional permit, which again, is going to be more money and it just depends on how important it is to you. But um, I actually I got a lot of a lot of other questions. So okay, no, no, hit hit the question. Uh, somebody asked, "Do you need insurance?" Yes, you have to have insurance, business insurance. It's a uh, renting on Airbnb is a business transaction, so you really have to. Um, you've got to cover your butt. Um, you know, like it's in addition, this is also in addition to your homeowners. It has to be um, a, 
additional because you are a business. So, um, and then another thing that people can't forget is you have to, in, in these times, these COVID times, you have to have a professional cleaning service because I am sure you don't want to get down on your hands and knees and clean up everybody's messes after each single person, especially if you're only renting night to night. Right. You know? Yeah. So that's a, that's another big thing. You've got to have, um, you know, that. Okay. So what other questions we're getting? Um, well, so somebody asked about how much can you charge? Well, again, it kind of depends on your area on, um, I mean, you can charge whatever you want, but I do have a tip. If if you go in and you do that little um, you do the little calculation thing to see what the area is, uh, you know, sustained prices. I would start lower than the average, lower than your competitions, just to get a little jump start on your own business because you don't want to price yourself out of the market right out of the gate. So okay. it, hey, Terry see. had a question also. He said some um, some areas of California limit the amount of um, VBROs within so many feet of each other. Is the Airbnb kind of like that as well? That is interesting. Um, no, um, not that I could tell, uh, especially because I stayed in one and then right next door she had the, uh, the neighbor had one. <laughs> so um, again, that could be, you know, this whole free for all thing that people have been just grasping at trying to make money and haven't um, registered, but that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. So what other questions we're getting? Um, okay. So let's see. Uh, what do you do with bad renters? Everybody has probably heard those stories of um, the parties and oh my gosh, just the, you know, I think there was a shooting death or something in Sacramento at, at somebody's Airbnb recently, but what can you do? Um, Airbnb really takes this seriously. Um, and you know, I obviously don't, I'm not, you know, paid by them or anything for this, but they do take it very seriously to, um, investigate everything, especially if neighbors are complaining, they don't want to like, you know, completely, um, you know, piss everybody off. So escalate it to Airbnb, you can also write a, a, a review about that renter because if they get bad reviews, then they can't rent also. So Airbnb is watching um, all those reviews both on both sides, the hosts and the guests. So, yeah, I, you know, hopefully it doesn't escalate from there. <laughs> okay. So let me ask you something like, let's say, okay, let's say, cause with investors normally, um, they'll look at a property. We'll get into an escrow. It'll be like, you know, 21 days or whatever the amount of property. And the second that they basically get the keys, they want to rent it. So how's that, how long does it, would it take you like to get something up and running? Like what is like, if, if I have a house, I'm like, okay, I just bought this house. I want to get on Airbnb. Like what is the time frame that they're looking at? Well, I think it depends on the city, partly because I know that I couldn't even get a hold of anybody. They're short staffed. Um, you, if you're going to do the legal route, which I highly advise, you've got to like fill that paperwork out. And I, I, I have honestly no idea how long it's going to take to push those permits through um, the short term rental permit, the business license. Um, and then when you file for the um, uh, the transient, um, occupancy tax. So all those things, you know, you've got a lot of, a, a lot of legwork to do before you can actually just, uh, you know, turn it on. Okay. So it's one of the main reasons why we wanted to do Airbnbs as well is because Sacramento happens to be one of the hottest rental markets in the United States. Okay. So housing in Sacramento is just nuts. I mean, if you look at like some of the areas like in the Tomas, like a Folsom, like whatever, I mean, basically the rental rates are crazy. And if you don't believe me, go to rent.com and take a look. So one of the things a lot of people in Sacramento have been doing from the very, very get go is putting in Airbnbs. Of course, since 2020, as Kathleen mentioned, they're a little bit more restrictive as far as what they can rent out. But California was a was really big in Airbnbs. So now it's kind of one of those things that since, you know, a lot of people are moving 
into Sacramento. And a lot of people are actually like waiting for their new homes to be built. Um, they need places to stay. They're a little bit more like family friendly and all this kind of stuff. And not to mention, you know, even though Airbnb prices could be a little bit more expensive, the last thing anyone wants to do is sign a year lease. In Sacramento, that's kind of normally what you find. You find year leases. There are some places that are maybe six month leases, <clears throat> but for the most part, you're going to get um, you're going to get a lot of year leases. So an Airbnb tends to be a very good solution for a person who, for the most part, um, is like, let's say you bought a home at Taylor Morrison and you had to sell your house within two months of getting in contract. So you sell your house. Now, what do you do? So you go, Hey, look, I want to make sure that we're in the school district of the house we're buying. We want something so the, the kids can like, feel like we're at home waiting for our new home. What do we do? So an Airbnb is of course, one of the options that people go to the most. So in areas like Sacramento, you're going to see a lot of like Airbnbs. And, but now that the restrictions hit, what I noticed was, and with COVID as well, a lot of people kind of switch their Airbnbs. Either they sold them or they're renting it out as more like a month to month type thing. So it's kind of interesting. All right. We got a question from Hal. Is Airbnb requires renters to prove vaccination or negative results before occupancy? Not yet. Not yet. Um, I, uh, I think they're still saying, obviously, like if you have, um, you know, it, it's kind of like when you go into the store with all their their signs, you know, do you have a fever? Have you been around anyone who tested positive? Um, so they just kind of have that wide disclaimer on the um, on the website. But otherwise, and that's when you're traveling as a like as I did last month, I I just filled out like, no, you know, I don't have a fever, blah, 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 blah. So um, but they don't require anything other than just, you know, they're trusting you for your word. I will tell you one thing, and this is just my own thing. Like I know we pay, you know, with Airbnbs, you pay for that cleaning fee after the end of it, but they better make sure these places are really, really clean because the last thing you want to do is be as light as they are about the, like the vaccines and then not clean it out. Like, so. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. My, um, my sister-in-law had a horror story. She, uh, rented a place out last minute at the, um, at the Jersey shore this summer and she got there and the trash had not been taken out. The, um, there was like slime on the stove. It was like awful. So she took document documented everything, pictures of every single little, ugh, it was awful. I'm telling you it was disgusting. I saw the pictures and I would never. So she, yeah, she sent it in, got all her money back, but uh, yeah, I mean, nobody's actually, watching i mean they're watching online but they're like how are they gonna know unless somebody complains enough about that specific host that it's a dump <laughs> yeah 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 well i mean i think the review process probably speaks for itself i mean like anything else there's so many review site out there so okay so what do you think um as far as like other questions you were getting regarding the airbnbs well um you know it, it's interesting to note that you know, because everybody, a lot of companies are still letting people work remotely. Um, like it's still very desirable, um, especially in a big city like Sacramento or actually like, like San Francisco, people are looking for a place to just get out of the city. They're not too far. Um, they want to just go work somewhere for just a change of scenery. You know, everybody's been cooped up but yet they have that um you know that freedom to kind of roam around and um i have a friend actually she's a a published writer of um fantasy novels she this is a, a situation like what we've had she bought a new house the new house the building supplies didn't come through this was in uh i think she's in georgia now she bought a house building supplies felt her sale fell through, they got her into another lot, you know, got her whole dream house built out as far as like the design and all that kind of stuff. And it's going to take them 12 months to build. So what did she do? She can work remotely because she writes. So she and her family sold their house, they packed up and they are literally traveling for an entire year, state to state in um, Airbnbs. So oh, wow. it's a way to see the country. It's, um, you know, you can see <laughs> like 
it, it's just like it's so cool because people can work remotely pretty much anywhere. So that um, that was something I, I really wanted to kind of, you know, there's San Francisco. How many people want to just like, you know, they want to they're working at home in their condos, you know, come mm-hmm. come to Sacramento or come somewhere and <laughs> run a, via, a, you know, Airbnb. Hey, what's up, Andresh? By the way, Andresh is it, he is super savvy investor. He's really he's got it. Li- literally, Andresh, I give you full props. I mean, he got off the plane. He had his calculator, his spreadsheets ready to roll. I mean, like if you're doing investing, if you're gonna buy units, like like I tell people all the time. I always talk about you, Andresh, too, and I tell people I'm like, man, he was like with his calculator, his spreadsheets, and everything. But like that's kind of how you do it for an investor. It's protecting your bottom line, knowing exactly all the costs and everything, too. So okay, so Andres has a question on new construction. Most HOAs do not allow Airbnbs. Any thoughts on traveling nurses, 30 day plus rental? Um, yeah, I know most of these new communities with their HOAs or CCNRs, you know, it's just it's a little bit more restrictive. Um, I know I know one of the things like Kathleen mentioned it earlier is that in Sacramento there was so much there's so much drama between the Airbnbs that like you know restrictions were in place. I mean it was blasted all over the news around here too with the with the shooting and whatnot. Um <laughs> I think the traveling nurse idea, and I think like a 30 plus rental, I think it's brilliant. Um, like I was in uh, Marin and I was taking my mother into the hospital and um, there's a nurse there taking care of her. And my, you know, my mother has a few rooms in her house and I was like, well, Hey, to the nurse, I was like, if you're looking to rent a room and she was like, I'm a traveling nurse. So that would be awesome. So I do think that market of the traveling nurse, I think, I think Sacramento is awesome for that market. We have UC Davis Medical Center. We have all the Kaisers. We have Sutter Health. Um, we just have a very good medical market. And like for all of you out there who are thinking Sacramento and you're wondering if she, you should invest or whatnot. I mean, one of the things a lot of people don't realize is we have a very thriving job market. We've got a huge medical job market with Kaiser, like I said, UC Davis, Sutter Health and all the, you know, the back end of that as well. We're talking about computer programmers. We're talking accounting and all that stuff. So there's a lot of jobs in the medical industry in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. Um, With nurses too, the idea would be maybe even um, setting it up so you could go directly to like maybe a Kaiser's, uh, you know, Kaiser or go directly somewhere where you can maybe have some kind of like in at the human resources. Um, I think that that would be brilliant though. I think honestly, if you, if something like that could be put in place, especially in Sacramento, considering we have so much medical here, I think it'd be, it'd be great. Um, I think there's an area, there's a Kaiser in Rancho that has a kind of like a, an area that's in between like Zinfandel and kind of like the Anatoly area. And I think there's some beautiful homes over there in the four to $500,000 range, nice newer homes. And I think those things are brilliant spots for like a t- uh, for a nurse traveling nurse situation um like i said the truth is with sacramento too a lot of people um that i've seen will get job opportunities here they don't really have the time to scout out the area but they want a place where they can stay now with traveling nurses you know they're here for three months then they're off somewhere else and if you could somehow set that up to to do that. I mean, 30 plus, I mean, that's just, I mean, if you could set that up and just have it work, I think you would have a, you, I think it'd be a gold mine. You know, I think honestly, I think it would be kind of a take on the Airbnb a little bit, but longer. And it'd be like, you know, nurse Airbnb or something like that. But I think, I think that's brilliant, man. And honestly, coming from Andresh, it does not surprise me. So Andresh, yeah, I think <laughs> right? next time you're in town, I think it's November. We'll, we'll grab dinner this time. And we'll talk a little bit about that as well. But I think that that's a, I think if you could make something like that work, I think if you could get the like HR departments from the various medical um, on it as well, I think it would be something that could really, really take off. So yeah. Good idea. Yes. People still like Airbnb over hotels as a way to explore different areas. How about Airbnb RV hookups? Ooh, I like that idea. Um, I wonder if, hmm, I'm seeing a niche, (laughs) a niche business inside the uh, Airbnb. Well, Um, the other thing too is, here's the thing about Sacramento. A lot of the houses in Sacramento already have like RV space. Right, Sacramento, you know, College Glen, Rosemont, Folsom, Roseville, you name it. A lot of the houses around here have like places to park your boat in front or your RV in front. 
um, or even just to pull it in as far as too. So, I mean, I think there's definitely something can be done here. I mean, the, the beautiful part about having like an Airbnb here with like an RV hookup is the fact you can also bring your boat up if you want to. So it could be a multi-used space in an Airbnb. But I do think that that's, that'd be pretty, pretty slick, to be honest. And something in Sacramento, that'd be pretty funny, fun to see. Um, I know. RVs. Well, you know, the, the sad thing with the, uh, um, I looked up like tiny homes and um, this, uh, Sacramento considers them um, not a motor vehicle, but they, because you can move it, you, uh, they don't, like they don't consider that a rentable option as an ABU, which is bizarre unless you uh, have it on a concrete pad, like a mobile home. So that's kind of a bummer. Okay. And we got Terry here who can create the app for you and Dresh. Terry is literally nice. a wizard of apps. <laughs> so if, if you guys want to meet, hook up, I got gotcha. you. You guys can get together, talk a little app design. Awesome. All right, so Kathleen, hit us with some more questions or your some more thoughts about your Airbnb research and your, tell the people what to do. Yes, okay. So as far as getting back to, if you're starting an Airbnb, you know now that you have to treat it like a business. Um, make sure your family and your neighbors are all on board because you don't want to, you know, have any problems with the neighbors. Um, the other thing is you're going to have to really like, I wrote all of this out and I really tried to like, not just Google it, but I tried to get inside my brain. What would I want to do to create a beautiful experience for, you know, visitors to my area? So I wrote down things like you want to, you know, you might want to consider like a get a, like a welcome, you know, gift, you know, it could be like local wine or something that doesn't have to be a lot of money, but it's just a little something, um, it, you know, it just makes such a big impression, um, you know, obviously keeping it super, super clean, offering little extras, maybe like some bikes to borrow, or if you're near water, maybe like, you know, have kayaks or something um, like all these little things should you want to do this you know you want it to be profitable <laughs> you want it to be a positive experience for everyone so um yeah i mean treating it like a business just being as professional as you possibly can as friendly remember your customer skills your customer service skills back from when you were in McDonald's or wherever, Taco Bell, <laughs> all of us had to work retail at some point. Customer service skills are huge because you're probably going to, you know, get some crazy people. All right. So, okay. So let's talk a little bit about, um, um, what is the, what, what do you think as far as like the future of these restrictions on Airbnbs? Do you think they're going to tighten up? Do you think they're going to loosen up? What do you think? I really was hoping they would have, um, I would, <laughs> I was hoping they were going to like loosen up by now, especially yeah. with the SB nine, you know, like it looks like we're kind of moving in that direction, but yeah, I, I, again, I tried to contact the city several times to find out what exactly is going on. Um, you know, the fees are going up on the applications and everything. And yet, you know, here we are with, kind of like it looks like we're going backwards with um you know not being able to rent out guest cottages and things like that yeah here's my experience okay so like i do the airbnb thing now and again i think i've done it like maybe three times so the things i liked and the things i didn't like one is like i need to go to pet friendly places so pet friendly places are a little bit mm -hmm. limited and the cleaning is a little bit more like that so that's one thing i you know, just a scarce of houses that had pet friendly places. So I wish that there'd be more pet friendly places. Do I understand why there's not? Of course I do. I mean, it's kind of common sense. It's just, it just is what it is. The other thing I did, it was like the interaction with the hosts. I thought the chat communications and everything was fine. In fact, I think a couple of the hosts had a set price. And then when they, when I started talking to them, they were reducing their price for me because they realized that like they had no availability. So I thought, so I thought it was like, it was good in that sense. Um, you know, the only thing about the Airbnbs, and it's never happened to me, but it always does make you feel a little bit of like nervous when you're going there because like there's something about a hotel. And I'm not saying I like hotels better because I do prefer Airbnbs, but there's something about a hotel that you know that when you get to the hotel, 
that you're going to get a key, you're going to get a room and you're going to be there. There's something about an Airbnb that even though like you're reserved, Whoa. you're good to go and you're driving, it's just one of those things that at times like it doesn't make you feel as like 100%. Like you're like, this is kind of interesting. And maybe it's just because I have not done Airbnbs enough to feel that way. But like, you know, if I do an Airbnb, like, you know, I think the last one we did was somewhere like Aptos in Santa Cruz. So we're driving down and everything's like, you know, the, the key is under the rock to the left and then turn the turn right. the gate this way and everything too. And so for me, who's used to like, you know, hotels, hey, you're booked in at this time, checking is at three o'clock, da, 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 boom, 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 boom. This is, you know, all that stuff. And it's very, very much like, you know, hotels.com, boom, boom, you're booked. Here's my thing and you're good to go. You know, the Airbnb thing, although the app is really nice, it's friendly. I think the picture is a little bit embellished, but hey, here's the thing. We live in the world of wide angle lenses, you know, really good uh, color manipulation, everything. But for the most part, the photos are okay. Um, I wish there'd be more homes with hot tubs because I love me a good hot tub. But at the same time, there was that sense when we were driving, like, it better be ready to go. You know, it better be good. It better be there. It, it Hopefully it's nice and it's right there. So I think the Airbnb thing is nice. I think it definitely took a hit during COVID. I think it took it kind did. of like a little bit of a hit in that area. You know, I'd like to see like how I was saying that I think um, it's got to be simple. And I think Airbnb, even though it it's still a little clumsy, to be honest, there's still a little bit. And I think they kind of maybe pass it off a little bit as much like the human factor. But I do think that, it would be nicer if it was a little simpler, like boom, 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 we're booked. You know, I was watching Did you that realize movie. how it started? Did hmm. you realize that it actually started with air mattresses? So it was air bed and breakfast. Really? <laughs> like air mattresses. It, I, I, yes, I went crazy with my research on this. And well, hit us more with some more research you did. Yeah, it actually started in, um, in San Francisco with air mattresses in these in the, uh, the founders two guys that lived together they rented out an air mattress in their apartment <laughs> and that's like where it started i guess it was for some big graphic design conference um and so yeah they and so then they had for like years they had the stipulation that you had to stay you had to have an air mattress and it was in the per in your house like I don't know. I don't know that I could do that. <laughs> so yeah, I thought that was really interesting. It's um, yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm in Philadelphia. Hey Kim, what's up? Uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, maybe re relocating. I live in the city, uh, convenient to everything. I just recently started considering Airbnb. Thanks for, Oh, no problem, Kim. Um, yeah, I mean, Airbnb is like, I've done them a few times and you know, I, I like them. I think like, you know, ideally, um, I'd probably consider, I, I think I'm going to keep doing them. I think they're like a nice kind of safe way to go. And I think I like the choices and I like the home feel to them. And I love the idea of having a whole house to myself, you know, the deck, the hot tub and not having those like hallways in the hotels where you're running around, you know, as right. much as I do, I do like those as far as how can I say it? Like now and again, when you're like, you know, traveling with someone or you're doing a conference, like that works, you know, it's okay. But the thing is like, if I'm going to bring my, like, you know, my daughter or my dog, you know, and all that stuff, and we want to go to Costco and load up with like a bunch of good stuff and get out there. Um, you know, I think Airbnb is definitely the way to go. I think, I think it, you know, there, it's still a little clunky in my opinion. Um, but I do think, um, that it gives you a little bit more of a vibe. Um, Oh, Kim. Okay. So you're renting your house out. Ooh, all right. So Kim, okay. So let me, let me ask you something. Okay. So instead of going for the rental route, as far as like just renting it out, why have you thought about going the Airbnb route? Like, is it, is it more like, give me the reason why you're thinking more the Airbnb. I'd love to know because a lot of people would just say, you know what, I'm just going to rent my house out. Or do you plan on kind of staying in the house and having the rooms rent out? What's your plan of attack? Well, and Kim is awesome. Kim is a uh, an interior designer that she is the bomb. And I think she still has her own Facebook live show about interior design. So thank you for um, hopping on, Kim. All right. So Hal, change door uh, door key to door lock. Pass oh, yes. Uh, I heard about that. Yep. Yeah, I think that that's pretty vital. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a double book to have someone coming in, that would not be yeah. good. <laughs> Oh, so Kim, not uh, not currently, just not considering it. I think, I think it, 
you know, I don't know. I mean, for myself, like I said, I work with clients all the time who come into town. We work with clients all the time. They're like, coming in looking for properties. And I've never really considered saying, hey, look, the Airbnb route, you know, I, I mentioned it now and again, but the idea of going down the path, the regulations and everything and setting it up, as far as like being in real estate and being a realtor, the last thing I ever want to do is put my clients in a situation where like they buy a rental property and then they're like, okay, Mark, you told us Airbnb, now what? So for me, it's always, it seems like the rental route seems to be a little bit more like the rental route, I guess, is like renting it out is like more like the tortoise and the Airbnb is more like the hare. I mean, it, it can work for both people different ways. Like I said, I, I do have investors that make tons of money in Airbnbs here. I mean, we're talking tons of money. Like we're talking, you know, three bedroom, but no, okay. He, my, one of my clients, Justin, he owns a duplex in car and no citrus sides or Carmichael. Sorry about that. I forget. They get citrus sides. Each one is a two and two. And every single month he makes between four and $6,000 a month on Airbnb. So for him, he's like super happy. And he, he actually contacted me and he was like, yeah, you know, I'm thinking about selling my house. What do you think? Or selling the unit. What do you think I can get for it? And he could get nowhere a, around what he was getting a month on the Airbnb. So he kept it. But so Airbnb definitely is thriving. So like Airbnb is just nuts right now. Okay, I live in a touristy neighborhood. There are other Airbnb in the neighborhood. Thought it might be lucrative. Not sure. It gives me the option of moving back here at some point. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. Okay, number one as a realtor, I'll tell you this, and this might make me the worst realtor in the world. Never sell real estate unless you have to. So <laughs> I would say, honestly, like, and I tell my clients this, and they always kind of look at me with this like kind of puzzled face like, Mark, what do you mean? I thought you I'm like, no, don't sell real estate unless you have to. Real estate is great. It's our retirement account. Like I always tell people, you know, my dad, my parents had pensions, 401ks, you know, as much as we want to, you know, rely on what supposedly is supposed to come to us. You know, these rental properties are like something you can touch. You can feel something that if you set up right can be your retirement. So I always tell people, you know, like, keep these properties. Don't, don't sell unless you really, really have to. If you can keep a property around, it's going to, at the end of the day, it's going to be something that will be mailbox money for you. So I'm always a big fan of saying like, keep property as long, long as you can. Um, and you know, at the end of the day, if you can get away with not selling it and having a rental property and it works for you, not only that, here's the thing guys, it's also one of those things that you can have these rental properties that you're passing down generation to generation to generation. I mean, that's the coolest part of the world. The thing, the whole thing, part, remember I did get through a car accident. So my brain's a little fried. So <laughs> You're doing this, great. <laughs> this is one of the things though, is the fact that if you create a portfolio of investments, you know, this is something that you can pass down to your kids. They can grow the portfolio even more. This is a really good wealth builder as far as this stuff goes. And it goes with just making sure you pick the properties that work the best. And so like Kim, Thank you for tuning in. Don't sell your property. All right. <laughs> so Kathleen, here's with some more topics before we sign off for the for the evening. Yes, actually, I um, I'm super excited to tell you about the Airbnb's most searched for um, amenities, and you hit two of them. The number one uh, was the pool. Number two was pet friendly. So um, pet friendly and jacuzzi. Yes jacuzzi um kitchen wi-fi washer and dryer uh tv and cable which of course you have to have that and um free parking so the jacuzzi was top pool oh and air conditioning if you're um yeah so pool air conditioning kitchen jacuzzi pet friendly wi-fi washer and dryer tv um, and free parking. So make sure you have those things because that's what everyone's searching for. Yeah. For me, if I go Airbnb, I'm thinking like it has to be pet friendly because honestly, we will not travel, especially when we can drive without our pup. Um, it has to be, has a jacuzzi. For me, considering what I do, it has to, has to have good Wi Fi. Yeah, wi Fi definitely is something that is like definitely, you know, oh yeah, look, your sister too. Good Wi-Fi. Absolutely. Good Wi-Fi. <laughs> There's no way I'm running to Starbucks on a vacation. That's not going to happen. So for me, you know, I like Airbnbs. Like I said, I prefer them over hotels. 
um, especially when you're traveling with like children or you're traveling with pets. I think it's a good vibe. I also prefer them to hotels if you're going to stay maybe longer than three or four days. It's just, it gives you a little bit of a way to like, kind of like, how can I say it? Like you can set up, you can plan out some nice little family dinners. You can kind of feel into the groove. Like, so my wife, I was like, yeah, next vacation we go in, it's got to be for at least a week. I don't want to have that feeling that you have in hotels where you kind of, you get there, you know, how many of us have gone to hotels and basically don't even use the drawers because we know that like, it's just not going to be long enough for us to use them. Airbnb is, I like the fact that you can kind of set up, you know, you yeah. can kind of like, like I said, go to Costco, pick up some stuff, some steaks and all that kind of stuff. What well, and don't forget that they are, um, they're also launching that experiences, Airbnb experiences thing. So, um, yeah, like they were trying to get more. So if you have like a connection with the local theater or, um, you know, like, a, I don't know, um, some, you know, tourist attraction in your town, you can offer, um, you know, a, like a whole package. And that's like a new thing that they're trying to push is the experiences. Oh, pretty good. And, Hal, yes. Hal says, what about TV? Is it necessary? <laughs> yes, you know? sadly, sadly, most people still want a TV. I could do without it, but most people still want it, especially if they have kids. They want to have, you know, um, the kids taken care of, them, you know, plop them in front after a long day or something. So, yeah. Yeah, I would say on my, on my scale of one to ten, for like, I'd give it about a seven. I mean, if it didn't have a TV, I think we can make do with like iPads or whatever like that. Right. Like I said, like I'm with Kathleen. It'd be nice to go somewhere where we could kind of unplug, you know, no right. TV and everything like this. But like at the same time, TV. Yeah, I'm on the fence with that one too, Hal. I mean, it's it's tough because you know, <laughs> you know, you want to kind of do it, but at the same time, the beautiful part. I will tell you one thing. Okay, this is this is kind of crazy though. The truth is. Because we live in the age of Netflix, we live in the age of good Wi-Fi, television's compatible to Wi-Fi. Man, if an if an Airbnb does not have a TV, man, unplug your TV at home, bring it with you. Pop it in the back, put it up, and you're good to go. We did that actually at our last Airbnb. We had a little bit, we had one of those smart TV kind of things, and we just brought it with us so we could go out. We could actually sit outside and watch TV by like the pool, fireplace, and relax a little bit, which was kind of fun. That's so, yeah, no, there's, there's many, many a slip between a cup and a lip when it comes to that kind of stuff. Um, so, any more Airbnb facts that we need to know about Kathleen? Yeah, you just have to go through, if you're going to do it, go through, make your list, do the pros and cons, um, get, do your full research. Don't just take my word for it. Um, contact your local, uh, you know, your government, the city office, um, planning boards, make sure that you're up to date with everything. And then, of course, if you're ready, then make a plan and start writing out the fun checklists. I, I have checklists here for you that are, you know, what they expect in a bedroom, kitchen, like all these things. They, you know, it's, I mean, who, yes, of course you're going to put toilet paper in your bathroom, but you know, there's like a little reminder sheet here with everything from A to Z. So, okay. So now that we ended our Airbnb conversation, we have a few more minutes so we can talk a little bit about other things. First of all, for all you folk that are thinking about moving out to Sacramento, Kathleen has put together some awesome PDFs on the city. So uh, on the various areas, give us an example about what these magical PDFs have that are going to make everyone excited out there. What do they got, Kathleen? Ooh, yes, yes. I love to give these out. Um, we have community guides that I put together for all of the, um, well, not all of the neighborhoods and communities, but definitely Rockland, Elk Grove, Sacramento. I have community guides, several more, Folsom, El Dorado Hills, so on and so forth, that have data, city data, population, school information, which is a big thing that I know people really, really want to um, know about. I have your school data in there. I have like the best Mexican restaurant or, or, um, different rest, you know, uh, highly rated, you know, nail salon. Like I have all sorts of things, the highly rated businesses in the area. So you definitely, um, you want to pick these up if you are new to an area, if you just bought a house in Folsom or something, you definitely want to pick up our it's not a lot it's not huge pages and pages but it's it's enough to just kind of give you a taste you know 
the tourist traps, you know, the um, food to get, so on and so forth. But most importantly, that school data, um, population, all that kind of good stuff. So community guides I have prepared for you as my gift. All right. I'm sending out this and I'm putting the email address so you can send over your request for this as well. So going out there right now, Hal, no problemo. And uh, Sabo, Hello. I got your message about 10 a.m. tomorrow. And I'll be meeting you over there as well at 10 a.m. I have to show a house to Tony at 9. And so um, I'll meet you over there at 10 um, to see how it goes. I'm really super excited for you guys. And honestly, like, yeah, it, uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's awesome. I won't be in my car, though, because it got wrecked. But I will be there in my wife's car. And she's not happy about that I'm doing that. Um, okay. <laughs> So we got the PDFs all good to go. The other thing too is guys, if you're looking for like this Airbnb PDF that Kathleen put together, feel free to reach out to that email as well. We can send you over the Airbnb PDF as well. Um, we're trying to put together a lot of these community guys. The other thing too is in um, 2022, we're going to put together a really rocking Facebook group. Um, probably earlier than that, Kathleen is going to spearhead this and it's going to be kind of like a little bit of like forums, all that kind of fun stuff. Mm -hmm. We're going to have different boards on the various areas like Fair Oaks, Orangevale, Folsom, mm -hmm. Carmichael, all that stuff. We're going to have PDFs in there. We're going to have videos specifically about things you can do there and all that kind of fun stuff. So if you're someone who's thinking about moving into the Sacramento area, this Facebook group in 2022 is going to be a must. Um, and things are just going to happen. We're just going to keep growing. It's going to be a pretty cool thing. But the other thing too about today is I want to introduce a lot of people to Kathleen. If you guys have worked with our team, you know, that Kathleen is like, I guess she's like the eyes and the ears of everything going on. Um, so if you guys get, you know, a call from Kathleen or she texts you or whatnot, just understand that like, we're pretty much like this. So everything happens. She knows it all. And she sets up a lot of the tours and everything like this. But not only that, she's a realtor in New Jersey. So if you're thinking about going to Jersey, she's a lady <laughs> to hit. Um, and also, uh, Hal mentioned, can we get your Airbnb list available? Yeah, that, e that text I just sent out to everyone too, feel free to use that email address to have any requests. Airbnb, if you guys want PDFs on the areas, just say Fair Oaks, PDF please. She'll send it right out to you as well. But for the most part, we want to we want to do more. We want to create more content so that for the most part, more content, more groups, more ways for you guys to learn various things about Sacramento. Now, what we are going to do or try to do the best we can is we don't want to regurgitate the same content in these various areas. Right. So what we want to do is keep the YouTube very streamlined, clean, the lives, in videos about informing like me cruising around vlogging, all that kind of fun stuff. Facebook group is going to be completely different where we're going to break down the various areas and give you guys a little bit of ideas of parks of stuff, things to do in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. Some of the stuff that like you might be thinking about moving to Sacramento and you don't know what to do on a Friday in that group. That's where you're going to find out some of the coolest, funnest things to do in Sacramento, a little bit of a review and all that kind of stuff. Um, and that's it, Kathleen, any parting words before we say adios to, uh, to everyone out there? No, I'm so glad I got to come on and say hi to everybody. So thank you, Mark, for letting me letting me out from behind my desk to help and, you know, talk about something I love. Well, hopefully it won't be the last time because I think you got more <laughs> stuff to say and I want to see it. But the other thing too, hopefully we in the Facebook group, once we start getting a thing up and rolling, you'll be seeing Kathleen go live on the Facebook group a lot more as well and answer all the questions you guys might have about like the process of buying, the process of selling, Sacramento in general, Airbnbs, all that kind of fun stuff. So guys, until next time, the other thing too is if you guys could please at this moment, could you like this video, share, comment, do whatever, because we really want to do this continuously every single yes. week. And we want to basically share this with as many people out there that might be looking to sell, might be looking to buy, might be looking to move into Sacramento. And they're thinking that maybe, just maybe, there's a resource like this out there that they could basically, you know, find out about stuff. And that's kind of what we're here. That's kind of what we're all about. So take a second, like, comment, and all that kind of fun stuff. And until next time, guys, we are out of here.
Guess what, guys? The video just ended. But don't worry, we have more videos just like that one right over there. And if you missed that red subscribe button during the course of the video, we got you covered right there. Hit that subscribe button. We promise to bring you some amazing content. We won't let you down. Now, if you're looking for a team in the Sacramento metro area to work with, we'd love to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. We always include a Zoom link down below. So book a time where we can talk to you a little one-on-one, -on -one, find out exactly what your real estate needs are.